TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Hiltzia Levy proclaims that the majority of Hamas's military infrastructure in the northern Gaza Strip has been successfully eradicated. Germany launches a wide-scale police crackdown of Hezbollah and Iranian terror organization throughout seven separate federal states. Evangelical Christian leaders meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, highlighting their unequivocal support for the state of Israel. Israel has effectively secured control of the northern Gaza Strip, where the IDF continues to systemically eradicate Hamas military and governing infrastructure. As Israel entered today into the 42nd day since the Islamist Hamas and its terror affiliates launched a brutal war in Israel, committing a massacre that resulted in thousands of casualties, IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Hiltzia Levy acknowledged during a tour of Gaza City that the majority of Hamas military and governing infrastructure has been successfully eradicated. We are close to destroying the military system that existed in the North Gaza Strip. We will complete it. We still have some finishing to do, but we are getting close to it. Also addressing the remarkable progress that the IDF had achieved thus far, Israeli Defense Minister Yav Gallant visited the division headquarters of the special forces which are currently operating in Shifa Hospital, under which Hamas's main command and control is located alongside other adjacent areas. I arrived today at the headquarters of the division whose special forces also operate inside Al Shifa Hospital. There are significant findings there, the operation continues, and it is done in a precise, selective, but very, very determined manner. The more we deepen this operation, increase the pressure on Hamas and erode more headquarters, damage more tunnels, eliminate more operatives, and bring down more heads of organization, the greater the chance of returning our hostages, because this enemy only understands power and we explain to him very well what power is. Regrettably, the IDF confirmed that during the course of operational activity, the body of an Israeli hostage, namely Yehudit Weiss, was located near Al Shifa Hospital. The body of Yehudit, may her soul rest in peace, was recovered by our forces. The 7th Brigade, which was scanning the area nearby the Al Shifa Hospital, recovered her body in one of the homes during the scanning. Near her body, we found bodies of terrorists who were holding Yehudit. Meanwhile, this morning, thousands of Israelis marched along Route 1 leading to the Israeli capital, Jerusalem, as they were joined by families of Israelis that are being held hostage by the Islamist Hamas in Gaza. Seven of my family members are kidnapped in Gaza. My mother, my sister, my sister's husband and their children, who are eight and three years old. A three-year-old girl is in Gaza. My aunt and cousin who is 12. How can you put a price on a three-year-old girl? We need them back now at any price. We are marching here today to Jerusalem Hundreds of families and thousands of people come join us to Jerusalem, hear our shout, bring them back home now. The whole world shout with us, bring them back home now. Accompanying the families of the hostages in the march to Jerusalem, Germany's ambassador to Israel, Stefan Seibert, proclaimed Berlin's unwavering support and pledged to exhaust all avenues to return the hostages back to their families. From the first day, we have been in very, very close contact with many families who have hostages in Gaza, especially, of course, German citizens, but not only German citizens. And I can only tell you that we have been with you in our hearts and in our minds from the 7th of October. We, we feel the pain uh, that you and your families feel. We pray and hope all day, all night, uh, for the release of everyone, the unconditional release of everyone. Everyone must come back healthy and safe. 
We work for this on all political and diplomatic levels and uh, we just ask you to, to keep the hope alive and it's wonderful, wonderful to see all of you today here. Very impressive um, and that's all really I can say. In our hearts and our minds we are with you and this is true for me, for everyone at the German Embassy, it's also true for uh, the government of Germany. It is important to highlight that the German government has been spearheading European support for the State of Israel as it recognizes the moral justification of Israel's right to self-defense while ratcheting up its own efforts to battle Islamist terrorism throughout Europe and Germany in particular. As part of this battle, German police conducted hundreds of raids throughout seven German states based on intelligence-driven information that implicated the Islamic Center of Hamburg for its support for the Lebanese Iranian proxy Hezbollah. Our security authorities are investigating the Islamic Center Hamburg and several possible sub-organizations. We are investigating the suspicion that this organization is directed against our constitutional order. We are also investigating whether the Lebanese terrorist organization Hezbollah is being supported from here. The suspicions against the Islamic Center Hamburg are serious. It has long been monitored by the Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution and is considered to be Islamist. Further constitutional measures must now be well prepared. That is why the extensive searches were necessary. Our security authorities will of course now carefully analyze the confiscated materials. The proceedings will of course be carried out in an open and unbiased manner, in line with the rule of law. Turning to Ankara, where Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, who voiced outright anti-Israel rhetoric since the first days of the ground incursion into Gaza, ratcheted up his hostile statements by claiming that Israel, rather than Hamas, is a terror entity. I am calling on Netanyahu from here. Do you have an atom bomb or not? Do you have it or not? Announce it if you dare. But he can't. Hey, Israel. You have an atom bomb, a nuclear bomb, and you are threatening with this. We know these. And your time of death is now coming. No matter whether you own a nuclear bomb, own whatever you own, but you are gonna. We are facing a genocide. Therefore, right now, hundreds, thousands of lawyers are taking this to the International Court of Justice in The Hague. And because Israel is carrying out such a genocide, we will be making an effort to take all the necessary steps regarding the genocide and make the necessary announcement. And right now, I am openly saying with a clear conscience that Israel is a terror state. The Turkish head of state blamed Israel and the United States for so-called stealing the elections from Hamas after the Islamist terror group won the legislative elections for the Palestinian Authority in 2006. You describe Hamas as a terrorist organization. Hamas is a political party that entered elections in Palestine and won the election. And after it won the election, you took away its rights. Who took them away? Again, Israel and America took them away together. Following Erdogan's remarks, which were repeatedly echoed by him over the past three weeks, Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu asserted during a meeting with Christian evangelical leaders that Erdogan showcased the sentiments of the camp of immorality which chooses to support terror as opposed to the global camp of justice and truth. President Erdogan of Turkey, who uh, 
calls Israel a terrorist state, but actually supports the terrorist state of Hamas, uh, has himself uh, bombed uh, Turkish villages inside uh, Turkey itself. So we're not going to get any lectures from them. We stand with those who stand for justice and truth, like uh, Reverend Graham, our many uh, Christian friends around the world, but also so many others. And we saw that yesterday in a mass demonstration in Washington uh, of uh, Jewish leaders and non-Jewish leaders, leaders of the Senate, leaders of the House. They stood for Israel. They stood for truth. They stood for justice. And that's, that's the forces of civilization that will ultimately win the day. There are millions of Christians around the world praying that God will give you his wisdom. And we pray that God will give you success. And so that's our prayer. Uh, the fact that you're coming here standing with Israel in Israel uh, yes, is mightily important and uh, gives us uh, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of strength and a lot of encouragement. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I'd like to encourage you, pray for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. Moreover, if you're blessed by our daily updates and would like to help us bear the costs of these productions, since TV7 Israel is 100% donation-based, please consider making a donation. You can do so by visiting our website at www.tv7israelnews.com. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again during our upcoming TV7 Israel updates. Until then, Shalom from Jerusalem.